Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to make the connection with what we talked about in the last few videos and again the table that explains the different macrostates and microstates when we have six molecules and in this case we're talking about six distinguishable molecules so one is distinguishable from the other I don't know how you do that in real life but we just have to imagine that and we place them in a box and we consider the box has two halves so in the previous video we had a situation where we said we had the six molecules on one half of the box and then when they transition to a state where they're distributed throughout the entire box the change in entropy was equal to 5.739 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per kelvin we got that from the equation where the change in entropy is equal to the Boltzmann's constant times the number of molecules times the natural log of the ratio of the volumes going from half the volume to the full volume so now when we take a look at the table that we set up notice that we unfortunately use the same letter k to indicate what macro state we're in versus k in the bowl as the Boltzmann's constant so don't get those two confused but notice that we can consider the number of macro states as the number of various configurations we have the number of molecules on the left side the number of molecules on the right side we can indicate them by n1 and n2 so either it's 6, 0, 5, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5, and 0, 6. So there are seven different configurations, therefore there are seven different macro states. In each of the macro states, there are a certain number of ways in which we can arrange the molecules to correspond to this configuration. So in the case of 6 and 0, there's only one possible way we can do that. All the molecules on one side and none on the other side. So therefore, there's only one microstate. And this is the general equation how we calculate the microstates, the number of microstates. Large n being the number of molecules, n being 6, divided by the number of molecules in the one side and the number of molecules on the other side. So in the case where we have 5 and 1, it would be 6 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by 1 factorial. Of course, 1 factorial is equal to 1 and 6 factorial divided by 5 factorial is simply equal to 6. Here's how we calculate the number of microstates for this macrostate. Here's the number of microstates, the largest number is equal to 20. When we have a situation where it's 3 and 3, it's the most likely uh, configuration that you'll encounter. And then we have the calculations for the other number of microstates. Now if we want to talk about the normalized, and of course I forgot a D in there, the normalized probability there you go the normalized probability meaning that if you have the probability that you'll end up in this configuration or this macro state or the probability you end up in this macro state when you add up all the probabilities together they should add up to one that's what we name it normalized probability so we divide it by the number 64 which is the total number of micro states so the number of micro states in this configuration divided by the total microstates micro in all the configurations that will give you the normalized probability. And finally here we calculate the entropy which is equal to the Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of the number of microstates in that microstate. So W sub K is the specific microstate we're in. We're either in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7 and that gives you any one of these, so this would be equal to a 1 for the first one, so there's seven different numbers of microstates for the seven macrostates. Now, if we calculate the entropy for each of those, those are the entropies times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. But then you say, well, wait a minute. On the previous video, we had a situation where we had six molecules on one side of the box, and then you allowed them to go anywhere inside the box so they're evenly distributed, and the change in entropy was equal to 5.739 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. And so you might erroneously think that, hey, shouldn't I have got the same number if I add all these entropies together? Shouldn't that represent the total entropy? But that's, of course, not the case at all. What we need to do instead is saying if we add together all of the microstates we can possibly have, 64 different microstates, and we replace W sub K by 64, and we take the natural log of that, well, what happens is 
the natural log of 64 will give us the same thing as n times the natural log of 2. In other words, we bring the n over here, 2 to the 6th power is 64, the natural log is 64, times k will give you this. So in other words, it's not equal to the sum of all the entropies, it's simply the total entropy you can have when you're in the most distributed state, the most hmm, okay, degenerate state, or the state that is the most probable to occur, where you have the molecules everywhere, so you go either have the molecules everywhere versus having all the molecules on one side, and the change in the entropy will be equal to this. So it's not quite the same as adding up all the entropies of all the various macrostates. So as long as we know the difference there, then it begins hopefully to make a whole lot more sense when we take a look at this table and compare that to what we did in the previous few videos. It turns out now you see the very nice match between the two approaches in how we calculate the entropy for the various states or going from one state to another or going from a state where we have all the molecules in the full volume to all the molecules in the half volume and what's the probability of that occurring and that is how it's done.